Welcome everybody. I'm Pastor Chris King with Northbridge Church in Frisco, Texas. And I want to welcome you this morning to this virtual experience in this live stream. Now, for Northbridge Church, we're here for those who are looking for more. By more, we mean more love, more truth, more transformation, and more success. But we don't define success by the way the world defines it. We define it how God defines it. Being productive for the kingdom of God. Living according to your purpose. So we just want to say welcome and I pray that you get some nuggets in today's message that will help you transform your life. Now, at Northbridge Church, we want you to be able to get your questions answered. So as you listen to the message, write down your questions and feel free. Text your question to 972-787-1761. That's 972-787-1761. And I will answer your questions following the message. Thank you again and enjoy. We would like to thank you for supporting our ministry and allowing us to share the word of God with you. Today, we invite you to become a partner in ministry with us. For your gift of $50 or more, we will send you a signed copy of Pastor Chris's amazing book, Black Jesus, White Jesus, A Search for a Colorless Christ. This book is a timeless exploration of Pastor Chris's personal journey of race and faith. Again, we thank you for becoming a partner today, and we look forward to continuing to share God's Word with you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm Pastor Chris King with Northbridge Church here in Frisco, Texas, where we are here for those who are looking for more. By more, we mean more love, more truth, more transformation, and more success. I want to thank you for engaging with us this morning. Uh, you could be anywhere right now and you've chosen to engage with us. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We're starting a great new series this, this week. And I just pray that you really, really get something out of this one. And so uh, you know how I do it, though. It doesn't make any sense for me to come up here and teach the word if you're not ready to receive the word. So I'm going to ask you if you're ready to receive the word. And you're going to let me know by saying, yeah, with all caps and emojis and all that other good stuff. So y'all ready for the word? Say, yeah. Y'all heard your word say, oh yeah, good deal. Father God, we thank you for this time once again. Just show up and show out, Lord God. Wherever someone is, wherever they're watching, wherever they're getting this word, Father, let not the circumstance, let not the environment be an, an, an inhibitor to you moving and you speaking into their lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. We are starting this series called, From Called to Chosen. From called to chosen. You know, many people are familiar with the scripture where it says many are called, but few are chosen. And so I want to really help you understand how to live the chosen life or living the chosen life. I want to help you understand how to live the chosen life life. So let us go to the scripture. We're going to Luke chapter 6 verses 12 through 16. Luke chapter 6 verses 12 through 16. That's what I'll be referencing this day. Uh, I won't read it word for word. Please read your Bibles. You can read it, but we will delve down into the scripture and let me just give you some context here. Here in Luke chapter 6, 12 through 16, you can also see the same account in Mark chapter 3 uh, or Matthew chapter 10, okay? Uh, you have the same account. This is why we call it the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, because you may see some of the same accounts uh, discussed in these particular uh, chapters, but or in these particular books. But we're looking at Luke chapter 6, verses 12 through 16, and in this particular account, Jesus goes off to pray, and then after he comes down from praying, he calls his disciples to him, and then he names them apostles okay and so he names them apostles so this is basically when they are named apostles okay now some people uh, mistakenly think that the disciples were called apostles at Pentecost and that was the first time they were called apostles but that's not true but here Jesus is present this is before Jesus's death burial and resurrection because when you look at the scripture Judas okay Iscariot is present okay and he can't be present if uh, if, if 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 Jesus uh, uh, has already 
uh, been crucified. So, um, and even in the scripture, in this particular account, it says, and Judas Iscariot, who also became a traitor. So this is prior to Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. He actually names the disciples apostles. Now, there's something that's happening here. And remember, we're talking about living the chosen life. And I want to, in this first message, from called to chosen, really expound upon what's happening here and start giving you an understanding of the process of going from called to chosen. There's a difference, okay? And so here in this particular series, we will also delve down in the, in the, into understanding the difference between uh, my purpose and my call. Okay, so I want you to get this. I want you to get some really good stuff here. So when we're looking at this scripture, we see some things going on. Jesus comes down from prayer and then he calls his disciples to him and then he names them apostles. Okay, now it's, there's, a, there's a progression here. There's a progression here. And one of the things that I want to show here is a progression from part-time to full-time engagement. Okay, there's a call here. That the disciples are going from part-time to full-time engagement. Here's why I'm saying this. Because the term disciple, it actually means student. Okay, And so in this particular episode, they're disciples. Initially, prior to Jesus going up for prayer, they are referred to as disciples. After he comes down from prayer, they are still referred to as disciples. And then he calls them over to them. And then he names them apostles. So there is a level of progression for him to name them now apostles means that they are progressing from one stage to the next. And in that, in that transition, there is a progression from part-time to full-time engagement. So the term disciple actually means student. But, uh, you know, in our understanding of student, there's still a lack of understanding there in regards to what was taking place during this particular time and era. So the disciple in this era uh, wasn't just a student, but had a an attachment to their teacher. Okay. Um, you know, there was an attachment, you know, the disciple was thought to be able to mimic or do the things that the teacher uh, could do after some time, right? So the, 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 the disciple, there was an attachment. Now it was a, a somewhat of a loose attachment, you know, because the disciple, uh, would have been, while it, they would have been proud to be attached to the, or associated with the teacher, there was still something that was that was different. There was still a part-time engagement there. So as a disciple, you know, you learned uh, about your teacher. You learned about your teacher's teachings. Uh, you, you spent time with the teacher. However, being a disciple was not a full-time commitment. Okay, it wasn't full time, you know, and what I mean by that is that you would spend time with your teacher and then you would go to your everyday work. Okay, you would spend time uh, learning and spending time with your teacher, but then you had other responsibilities. Okay, and so there was some type of, uh, it was bivocational, you know, uh, we, we talk about bivocational pastors who, who uh, and bivocational people who have multiple jobs and multiple roles, bivocational pastor, most pastors in the U.S. are bivocational, for those that don't know, and what that means is that although they are pastoring and shepherding a group of people, they still have everyday lives and day-to-day -day responsibilities and other jobs. So here, the disciples uh, although they were disciples, they were students of Jesus. They spent time with Jesus, but after some time, they would go back and do day-to-day -day, uh, and everyday work, okay? But as an apostle, okay, we see there's progression and transition. As an apostle, you now have a full-time commitment, okay? So here we see they're going from part-time to full-time engagement, okay? As an apostle, there's full-time commitment. It's a lifestyle. Okay, it's it's what you do. It's it's it, you are an apostle. This is this is what you do. You know, you know, even though you've graduated from disciple and student, you know, you're an apostle. And this is a lifestyle and this full time. But that doesn't mean that you stop learning. Your learning now becomes a continuous lifestyle and you're learning and studying while you're outperforming. So you are still learning. An apostle never stops learning. OK, you still never stop learning. You know, sometimes people get to certain steps in their profession or in their career and they just feel like they got it made. Oh, I've rested here. Even after you get your doctorate, you still got to learn. 
Doctors still got to learn. People who get to the highest level of their education, they still got to learn. There's so much to learning. I always get upset when I see somebody that doesn't value learning. They, when they don't value learning, I run away. It's like, you're not getting better. You're not getting smarter. What do you mean? You think you know everything? Oh my goodness. You're so stupid. You think you know everything. So, you know, I, I always have a problem with people that, that stop learning and stop pursuing understanding. Apostles, they're still learning. They never stop learning. It's a full-time commitment that the disciples are moving into. So they're going from part-time to full-time engagement. So, you know, they're still learning. So they're still students and they're still spending time with Jesus. So they're still his disciples. So apostles here are disciples also, but disciples are not apostles. Okay. Apostles are disciples because they never stop learning. They're still students, but disciples are not apostles. So here to be a disciple in this particular time, because when we're looking at Jesus' disciples, people only know of the 12, but Jesus had many more disciples, right? Even when he sent them out, he sent out more than just the 12, right? He named these as apostles. So, you know, apostles are disciples, but not all disciples are apostles. And, you know, to be a disciple here, all you had to do was simply believe and study. That's it, right? You know, um, there was just a need to believe and study, okay? So here there's this process. We see a level of progression, okay? And I'm setting the context. This is a foundational understanding for you to know how to live the chosen life. And we're talking about many are called, but few are chosen. What does that look like? What is that chosen life? So there's a process, okay? You're seeing it here. Okay, you're seeing Jesus going up to the mountain. He's praying. Prior to that, they're disciples. He's coming down. He comes down from praying. They're still disciples. Matter of fact, he calls them over as disciples. Then he names the 12 apostles. So there's a progression and a transition here. And in that process, there are five stages that you go through that I want to introduce you to. Okay, there are five stages that you go through that I want to introduce you to. Okay. The first is you're called, okay? Now, I'm going to really focus some attention on this level of understanding of call because in each stage, there's multiple things. So we're talking about going from called to chosen. So the first stage is you're called. Many are called, but few are chosen, okay? So first, you're called. Then you're convinced, Okay, you know, when you look at Jesus's ministry and you see there were people from far and wide that were called to be in the vicinity and to experience some of the things that Jesus did, either as passers by or as firsthand witnesses or as people who were called, you know, through their faith. You know, there were so many people that were called and they were called to be in the vicinity of an experience that convinced them of who he was or what he was capable of doing. Okay, so there's the calling, you're called to come into the vicinity to possibly experience God. And in that, you will be, con you're convinced to the point to where you're compelled to come. Okay, and in Jesus, you know, in one of the parables of the great wedding feast, Jesus says, compel them to come, right? He invited them and then it says, then they didn't accept the invitation, compel them to come. Okay, you are compelled, you are drawn, you are, it's, it's, it's magnetic, you are compelled, you, you, okay, I'm convinced, but no, now I'm compelled to follow. Okay, so there's that, there's that process. You know, when you look at Jesus' disciples, yes, he called them. Some of them he said, hey, follow me. Hey, yeah, come on, follow me. You know, I, I saw you over there, yeah, follow me. He called them. Okay. And then in the midst, so he called them. Oh yeah. I saw you by the fig tree. Oh wow. You saw me by the fig tree, right? I'm convinced that I need to come and follow you. Now I'm compelled to follow you. And then in the midst of that, they're chosen. Now that's where, 
We're taught many are called, but few are chosen because there's a process in being convinced and compelled. There's something that you're going through. And for, for you to be chosen again, now as they're being chosen, they're going from part-time to full-time engagement. Many people are okay with resting on the fringes and being part-time believers. See, part-time allows you to engage in some of the stuff that you really want to engage in. Part-time allows you to be in the vicinity and never give up what draws you to begin with. Part-time allows you to come but doesn't place the responsibility. You don't have to deal with the responsibility or any accountability to become better. Part-time allows you to be around but not really understand. Part-time allows you to touch it but not really feel it. Part-time. See, many of us are okay with being part-time engaging part-time you know have you ever been talking to somebody you know on the phone and you're really not engaged you're engaging part-time you you engage just enough to make them think that you're there like what 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 do you say what i told you she was crazy you know you you, you engage part-time you're really not listening if somebody asks you man what did i say oh man you know what you said uh, you, you know yeah, man, you was talking about, man, you know, such and such. Yeah, man, how he did you wrong. You know, you know I heard you, man. I heard you. I'm, I'm with you. You know, you're, you're engaging part time. So, you know, part time allows you to be there, but not be there. Right. So here, you know, it's for you to go and live the chosen life to go from called to chosen. You've got to be willing to go into full time engagement. And notice this was engagement, right? It's not just commitment, it's engagement. It's one-to-one -one relationship. It's relationship, meaning that everybody's responsible for their own faith response. It's engaging. I am engaging with you when you're engaging with me. I'm speaking to you when you're speaking to me. I'm listening. I'm gathering. I'm understanding you as you understand me. It's engagement. So you're going from part-time to full-time engagement part-time activity to full-time engagement. There's a difference. So here, you go from chosen, and you go from chosen to being commissioned. See, if you're going to live the chosen life, you cannot be chosen until you're willing to be commissioned. And so you have to be willing, you have to be willing to be sent because that's the whole point of being chosen. Chosen has to deal with being set apart specifically to be sent. So as you are convinced or called, convinced and then compelled, you find out why you're there to begin with and you're really there to be commissioned. And so if you're not willing to be commissioned, because commission has to mean that you're, uh, you're, you're, uh, interested in somebody other than yourself. You're interested in doing what God wants you to do for his glory, for, for others' benefit. So uh, being commissioned to be willing to be sent means that I have to be willing to go beyond myself. I have to be committed to something bigger than me. And for so many people, that is so hard to do that they're not willing to be commissioned. So they're okay with resting in the part-time in part-time activity okay so we got this process and the five steps being called convinced compelled chosen and commissioned okay now I told you I was going to really rest on this call because in the passage here in Luke chapter 6 we actually see three references to call three references to the word call okay now but there are a total of four different calls, okay? There are a total of four different calls. So that first step, that first step has four different types of calls to it. So when we're talking about call to be chosen, we have to understand where we are in this process. The first reference to call is a broad invitation. Okay, it's a broad invitation. It's as in Matthew chapter 22 and 14. Okay, it's not in this passage. It's a broad invitation where Jesus calls people. A broad invitation. 
the multitudes. He calls every, so many people are involved in the initial call. This is a broad invitation. This is as if I am having a wedding and I want everybody to come, not just everybody. I want everybody. You know, when you, when you say everybody, you mean everybody. It's like, I want everybody to come. So it's like a broad invitation. Hey, y'all, I'm posting it on social media. Hey, y'all, come on. We're going to have a good time. It's a party. Everything is going to be happening. We're going to be dancing. We're going to be doing all kinds of stuff. It's a broad invitation. It doesn't have to be personalized. Right? It's a broad invitation. So that's the first, that's the first call. It's not necessarily present in this passage, but that's the first call that takes place. And we see that in Matthew chapter 22, uh, verse 14. And then in this passage, we see that they're already disciples. I told you that, you know, it wasn't just the 12 disciples, right? Jesus had a multitude of disciples. And then when he calls the disciples in this passage, after he comes from prayer, he called the disciples to him. So after there is that broad invitation, there is a call of proximity. Okay. There is a broad invitation. I'm inviting all of y'all to the party. And when you get there, I'm going to give you a specific call to come closer. I want you to experience me in a more intimate way. It's a call to proximity. It's a, it says, come to me, right? It's not come around. See, a lot of people have been coming around. You've been coming around church. You've been coming around scripture. You've been coming around the man of God. You've been coming around. You've been in the vicinity. But now Jesus is saying, come closer. A call of proximity. Okay, you're too distant now. Because, and now that you're so distant, since you're so distant, you really can't hear me, you really can't feel me, you really can't, you really can't understand me, you're, you're not close, you really don't have relationship. A lot of times, religion focuses on the different activities, and we engage in part-time activities, but aren't committed to full-time engagement, so therefore, we never have relationship, we simply rest in religion. Many of us are upset with religion because we desire relationship. All you've got to do if you're tired of religion is to accept the call to come closer and have relationship. It's a call of proximity. Come closer, my dear. Come closer, my son. Come closer, friend. Come closer. Come closer. Come closer. See me. Hear me. Feel me. Understand me. See, it's different when you are in a place, an arena that's filled with tens of thousands of people and you're just one of many. And then when you have floor seats and you can see and you can hear the swish of the nets and you can hear the coaches in the huddle and you can experience it or it's different when you're in a concert and you experience the concert one of tens of thousands of people and the difference is when you have backstage passes right it's different it's a call of proximity so jesus is saying come closer and then next after he calls his disciples closest closer he called them out from the others he called them out from the others. So he calls all of his disciples closer, and then he calls out the 12 from the others. This is setting them apart. He is calling to anoint them. Okay? After you have been engaged for some time, after you have been committed, after you have shown yourself that you are committed to being commissioned, you are now call there's a call that is set apart to anoint this is a call to anoint this this particular these are different calls different references to the word call even in the original greek text in the text greek there are different 
words here that's used for call to let us know there are different types of call. This particular call is the word that is used for the word church, where the base word in the Greek is for church. It's a call to set apart for something holy, a call to set apart for the purposes of God. It's a call to anoint with the vision of God, the purposes of God, the mission of God to go forth and do the will of God. It is a call to anoint and set apart. It is a call of protection. It is a call of purpose. It is a call of mission. It's a different type of call. So once you've not only just come in close proximity, you've experienced him enough to say, hey, I now recognize that I'm set apart. I am holy. I am anointed uh, by him. I am set apart for his purposes. So it's a different call. Then lastly, there's a call to identify. So he called them closer only to call them to anoint them, only to call them who they were, okay? It's through this where you get your identity, where you can really rest in your identity. He identifies you according to what he's created you to be and who he's created you to be. He's, there's a call of identity. He's naming them apostles according to your role. I'm naming you according to what you're going to do. I'm naming you. The mere fact that I'm naming you apostle means that you have now been commissioned because apostle is one to be sent. He says, I'm naming you according to your role. Therefore, you have no excuse to say, what is my role? What is my purpose? See, it's a call to identity, to identify them with their role, their purpose, and their potential. So it's when you really come closer to Christ so that he can now anoint you for his holy purposes and identify you with his purpose. You know, it's that's when you will understand your identity. That's when you'll understand your purpose. That's when you will understand your mission. That's when you will actually understand who you are in him. So we have four calls. The broad call. Come on, everybody. Y'all come on experience. This great big gala. Then when you get there, come on. Come closer. I want to talk to you. You. You, specifically. I want to talk to you. Because you're here. But I see that you're wondering. You're wondering, why am I here? Why am I worthy? How did I get this invitation? He's saying, I'm calling you closer. And as I call you closer, I'm going to anoint you and say, Hey, you are more than what you are living you are more than what you're demonstrating. You are set apart. I'm anointing you. And as I anoint you, I want you to get a glimpse. And as I anoint you and identify you, according to the anointing, I want you to get a glimpse of the vision of the potential that now rests in you according to this anointing. And as you get a glimpse of this vision, I want you to live according to the chosen call. People of God, this is just the foundation. We're going to really delve down deeper into living the chosen life. I pray that this has blessed you as it has blessed me in teaching. Now, if this has truly blessed you and you want to sow into Northbridge Church and the work that we're doing across the globe, there are several ways that you can give tithes and or offerings. The first is going to our website, www.thenorthbridge.org www.thenorthbridge.org and click on the word give or you can cash out this dollar sign NBC Frisco that's dollar sign NBC Frisco or you can text the word give to 972-866-7867 972-866-7867 people of God I pray this has blessed you but don't leave because we have our weekly challenge that I want to bless you with but in the meantime, please recite with me our giving statement. It says, my giving is an honor and not a burden. It is a seed that I sow and not a debt that I owe. May God bless it 
and honor it and multiply it for his kingdom. In the name of Jesus, amen. We thank you for your gifts because it's with your gifts that this ministry can go forward and do the work of God and help transform people's lives. Now, for your weekly challenge, I've given you the different pieces of the process, five stages of the process called convinced, compelled, chosen, and commissioned. I want you to do a self-reflection and truly evaluate yourself and ask yourself, which stage am I in? Which stage? Have I simply just come to the broad gala, to the broad party? Or have I been convinced of who he is? And have I been compelled to follow, to truly follow and let him lead me in my life? Or am I living the chosen life? Have I been ready to be commissioned? Or am I living out my commissioning? And then when you ask yourself and you do that self-reflection, the next thing is to answer, how do you know? I want you to write down how you know. What evidence does your life show that you are in the stage that you're in? And regardless of what stage you're in, don't worry, don't fret, because you're always learning. You're always growing in Him. People of God, I pray this blesses you. Thank you. Be blessed. Till next time. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed today's message. Now, some of you may be asking yourself, how can I experience more love, more truth, more transformation, and more success in God? The first step is you must accept Him into your life and give your life to Him. Now, if you hadn't done that, or if you're not sure, all you have to do is repeat after me and say the simple prayer. Say, God, I recognize that I have lived a life apart from you, and I no longer want to be apart from you. And God, I recognize the sacrifice that you've made by sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sins. And so God, I accept him as my Lord and Savior into my life. God, I welcome you into my life. Amen. If you've said those words, welcome to the fold. I, am, I thank you. I'm excited for you. And I just know that your life will never be the same. Now, there's some work because now you'll now get to be connected to God and understand His purpose for your life and your identity in Him. Now, others may say, hey, pastor, I've done all of that, but I just need prayer. My life right now is a little uneasy and I just need someone to stand with me in prayer. Now, if that's you, we will stand with you in prayer. All you have to do is text the word prayer followed by your name to 972-787-1761. Text the word prayer followed by your name to 972-787-1761 and we will reach out to you directly and pray with you. Now others, you may say, hey, pastor, I need someone to stand with me and empower me and coach me along this journey. And that's what we're here for. That's exactly what a pastor is here for, to shepherd you along the process. And if you say, Pastor, I want you and Northbridge Church to be that family for me. We welcome you. It doesn't matter where you are. You can be here in Frisco, Texas, or you can be on the other side of the country. It doesn't matter where you are. All you have to do is text the word covering, followed by your name to 972-787-1761. That's 972-787-1761. And we will walk that journey with you. I'm excited for you. Welcome to the fold. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family of God. And I am so excited and I can't wait to see what God has in store for you. Be blessed.